Second commentary starts now! Imagine, in the distant future, you step into a machine that has the ability to instantly transport you across the world. Unfortunately for you, the machine has to completely obliterate your every particle for this to even happen. In other words, you're turned to a crisp, and technically speaking, you're killed by that motherfucking machine. Fortunately for you, the structure of your atoms and all the relevant physical functions are mapped out by, the, by that terminator before you, you turn to dust. And that information is conveniently sent to that part of the world where you are supposedly being transported to. Now on that end, you are quickly reconstructed atom by atom and all the relevant functions are preserved and you're back again. Now, okay, I could easily ask the obvious question, are you still you? But I don't want to really pose it that way. Um, that kind of question, whether you are you, can become pretty difficult, I mean, rather difficult to even remotely traverse because it makes reference to an I. And that means the question presupposes there is some I to begin with. So that's not how I want to pose it, even though it's going to be related. Instead, I'm going to be talking about a scary word called SUPERVENIENCE. Now right off the bat, I should warn you, supervenience is a complicated topic and some insanely intelligent people have been arguing about it for hundreds of years. Yes, hundreds. So there's really, there's no way that a single video uh, consisting in Call of Duty gameplay is going to capture all the germane issues deemed important by a good number of people. So in order to even frame certain problems related to supervenience, we would have to possess prior knowledge of a whole host of subject matters like neuroscience, cognitive science, uh, what else, um, linguistics, phenomenology, metaphysics, epistemology, um, all those ologies. Now given this difficulty, I have to admit, I contemplated whether or not I should even attempt this subject matter for my second commentary in fear of scaring my current single-digit subscribers, <laughs> my single-digit subscribers away, but I'm taking a risk, and I hope you keep that in mind. So, uh, supervenience, what is it? Now, okay, I, I have, I printed this out, I'll give you the definition um, given on the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, and then I'll do my best to point out what I consider um, the most relevant for this commentary. So the way, oh, let me get the paper, uh, the way Stanford explains it this is this way. A set of properties X supervenes upon another set Z just in case no two things can differ with respect to X properties without also differing with respect to their Z properties. What the fuck? Well, let's begin. Uh, let, let us break it, break it down into a less analytic form. It's actually quite simple, so don't worry. Sometimes it's better to just hear how the word is used, uh, I think, rather than give a definition. So you'll often hear it uh, being used in a host of situations. So um, let me, let's take your Xbox, for example. You can be playing Call of Duty, uh, but playing Call of Duty is nothing above and beyond putting the disc into your Xbox. Or PS3. So, okay, so you, 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 um, put the disc in your, um, Call of Duty, uh, you put the disc, Call of Duty, into your Xbox. Call of Duty cannot, however, just begin playing by itself without that disc. Now, I get some of your, you computer nerds can find ways to play it, uh, without that disc, but that's not the point. You still needed the disc in the first place at some time. So in this case, if you have a friend who also has an Xbox, and just for the sake of the argument, his or her Xbox is just like yours in every way, um, same hardware, same programs, same electrical patterns, and so on, if you put your Call of Duty disc in their Xbox, it should play Call of Duty, and nothing else. Call of Duty supervenes on the physical makeup of the Xbox and the disc. Call of Duty cannot be played without those physical components. Okay. Now that might seem quite trivial and perhaps uninteresting, but let's apply it to our original thought experiment of you being instantly transported across the world. Supervenience in this context uh, relates to the question, what is the mind? How are we to understand the mind? Is it non-physical or physical? With supervenience, we have a way of talking about the mind that, depending on whether you accept supervenience or not, reveals a lot about what you believe about yourself. So if you haven't thought about what it means to have a mind, then think about what I'm about to say and you might learn something new about yourself. In relation to the mind, we have something which is called mind-body supervenience. 
And to put it simply, if there are two physically equivalent people, that is, two people who are physically, biochemically exactly the same in every way, they will both be mentally the same. Put, put a little more technically, individuals exhibiting all the same physical properties will instantiate or possess exactly the same mental properties. What this means is, it is impossible, according to mind-body supervenience, to have two individuals uh, with the same physical makeup um, have different mental states. That's an impossibility. Whew. Now that is mind-body supervenience. Now mind-body supervenience comes in many flavors and people have argued about the details of what someone must be committed to if they believe this. But what I want to point out here is what mind-body supervenience is not saying. Because it is easily confused and I've read many things that and people have made um, made uh, the same, this kind of mistake over and over again, so I want it to prevent it from you doing this. So mind-body supervenience is not saying that if two people have the same mental state, they must be equivalently phys uh, equivalent physically. That is not what it's saying. Because mind states can be, and here's another jargon word, mind states can be multiply realized. That means two people can be sad, but that doesn't mean they have to be physically the same. Two people can both be in pain, but that doesn't mean they have to be physically um, in pain in the same way. Mind-body supervenience only is committed to saying that two individuals who are physically the same must also be mentally the same, but not the reverse. So now what do you think about our original thought experiment? Do you have the same mind when you are reconstructed atom by atom? You are physically the same in every way. Sure, you're composed maybe of different atoms, but they are all organized in exactly the same way, functionally speaking. Does your mind supervene on the physical? Could your mind be different when you are transported? Though you are physically the same, do you think there's a possibil possibility that you will be a different person mentally? Now, depending on how you see this reveals a lot about you, or a lot about what you think about the world you live in. So, I'll leave you with that to think about for the day. Hopefully that doesn't screw with you too much. So, anyway, if you didn't know, I'm Mr. Normal, and good morning, good night, and nah, I'm not gonna say it. Fuck you.